Okay, let's start.、Uh, so, hello everyone.、Uh, welcome back to Information Economics. Today we will continue our discussion about incentives in decentralized systems. This will be our second lecture to introduce to you the idea about incentive issues in decentralized systems. Today we will talk about channel structure selection problems. Okay. Yeah. So as we mentioned, this will be the topic about the incentive issues. In decentralized systems, we know when a system is decentralized, when people do not make decisions together for the system's pur- purpose, then there will be some incentive misalignment issues. Last time we talked about channel coordination problems. About in a distribution channel, how may we design different contract forms to induce for the system optimal or channel optimal behaviors? Okay. And today we will discuss another type of decentralized incentive issues. It's called the channel structure problem. Okay, and to this purpose, we will introduce a classical paper written by McGuire and Stiling in 1983. Ah, this paper is again published in Marketing Science, the one of the most important marketing journals in this、uh, academic field. Okay, so let's introduce to you the channel structure problems.、Uh, we know, suppose you are running a business, and suppose you are in a marketing department. The one of the most important thing you need to do is to select a distribution channel, which means you need to decide as a brand owner. You need to decide how would you like to deliver or push products to your end consumers. How would you sell your products to end consumers? We have this question certainly because there are so many different options. So how may a manufacturer reach end consumers? The first option is to sell through independent retailers. There are so many big or large retailers in this world. For example, you know there are Costco's, right? And or in Taiwan, you know if you are selling computer. Uh, related products, you may sell them to、uh, Chan Kun or Chen Guo Dian, something like that. Or in the United States, if you want to do that, you may sell them to、um, Best Buy or some large retailers. Okay, that's one possibility. Another possibility is to sell through franchises. Franchises are、um, in Chinese, Jia Meng Dian. Okay, and so that means you allow someone's To join your um your in some sense your channel, okay. Someone wants to join your channel to become your downstream franchise stores, and they will operate that store by themselves. But somehow you you guys will share revenues, okay. That's franchises. Or、oh, for example, um, what's a hot topic in nowadays in Taiwan is about Qingyu, right? The company. Of the company Qingyu allows for franchises. If you want to open a、um, drink store, you may want to ask Qingyu for you to join as a franchise. So that's one possibility. Other possibilities are,、uh, you may operate your own retail store or some kind of zhiying dian. For example, Apple may want to run their own Apple stores, or Qingyu may want to open some of their um. Retail store, I mean, Jin Dian, okay, and also you may run its own outlet. Huh, typically, outlet means something that is larger, okay,、uh, larger in scales, but it's it's still something owned by the company directly. Or if you want, you may just operate operate an online store. That means you are running B to C directly. Huh, most of those um fashion apparel manufacturers. Are opening online stores so that they may sell their products to consumers directly. Okay, that's some other ways. So you know there are so many different ways to reach consumers. How would you choose which one to use? So in general, uh, different there are different channels, but a channel is either direct or indirect. So there are five channels here, which are direct and which are indirect. Probably we have different answers based on different standards, but、uh, a common solution is here: independent retailers and franchises 
as these stores are owned and operated by other guys that are not controlled by yourself. Okay, the first two situations are typically called indirect channels. The last three cases, on the other hand, are direct channels. If you are operating your own selling business, then you are running a direct channel. Even though you have a factory and you have a retail store, it seems that you are doing two things, and it it seems that you are not delivering products to consumers directly. But whether a channel is direct or indirect is mainly depending on who is operating the retail store. Okay, as long as the manufacturer is running its own retail store, then that's a direct channel. Uh, we say a direct channel is integrated or under integration, and an indirect channel is decentralized or under decentralization. A comparison between direct and indirect channels is the comparison of integration and decentralization. So certainly, one may want to mix several different distribution channels. Oh, that's possible. And typically, if you want to do that, the problem would be very complicated. And in this paper, at least, we will try to focus on or restrict ourselves to the case that we may only run one channel. Okay, so direct and indirect channel. What's the issue here? Uh, probably you want to ask what's the benefit of adapting a direct channel. The reasons may be uh, somewhat clear. First, if you run the selling business by yourself, if you face marketing problem, if you face the market by yourself, it will be easier for you to understand end consumers. Then, as a manufacturer, if you know the market, if you know the consumers, it will be better. It will be easier for you to design products that fit consumers' needs. Okay, it will be easier for you to design popular products. So that's one、um, one benefit. Another benefit, or、uh, more theoretically, is that in principle, controlling everything or complete integration is just optimal. And、this is something we discussed at that time. If you are allowed to control everything, then why don't you do that? Okay, why would you like to having someone to share revenue, share profits with you? Okay, you know, or I I should say, we know,、uh, we know, decentralization typically creates inefficiency. Okay. The best thing we want to do in the topic of channel coordination is that first, find some ways to make the system like integration, okay, and then make the pie as large as possible, and then split profits to different players. That's something we want to do, right? So that means、um, integration somehow means optimal, means system optimal. It will never be possible for a decentralized system to be better than integrated system. Okay, oh, if we assume all the players are equally、um, performing equally good. Okay, so if there are so many benefits about direct channels, if integration, I mean complete integration, is always optimal, why in practice we still see indirect channels? Oh, that's a question we want to ask. In general, that's how people do research in this field. When you observe something, you think about those theories you learned in the past, and then you ask,、hey, "This practice seems to、um, contradict with what I have learned about theories. Why theory? Why existing theories cannot ex- cannot explain this practice?" Oh, that's my question, and then I try to、um, reconsider or re reinvent theories to explain practice. Okay. Anyway, here, huh? Let's go back to thirty years、uh, in the past. So, why do we still see indirect channels? Yeah, sure. Sometimes you have no choice. For example, I am a manufacturer. I know how to produce products. But I don't know how to sell it. Okay, I do not have the profession to operate retail stores, or if I want to sell my products, 
overseas, uh, to the United States, to Europe. I just don't have any people there. How may I open my retail store there? Probably I cannot speak English. Then how may I sell products to the United States? Oh, something like that. So sometimes you have choice. You have no choice. You need to have someone to help you. That's that are those independent resellers. Or in many situations, you can do that, but those independent retailers can just do better than you. They are professionals. Oh, this term, this sentence somehow just means uh, 让专业的来 right? So what are those situations? Uh, in many situations. A retailer have a better reputation in that market. For example, if you are want if you want to sell products to, for example, the United States, okay, if you, if nobody in the United States know your brand, then when you want to sell your product there, it will be very difficult. In that case, it may be easier to sell your product to, for example, uh, Costco, for example, Target. Or any kind of well-known national large retailers, and then consumers go into their stores to see. Oh, yeah, there is a new product. Oh, from Taiwan. Oh, the price is okay. Ah,、uh, looks good. I may want to try it. Okay, you may want to cooperate with one retailer that has a better reputation than you. That's one possibility. Also, oh,、uh, retailers may do better marketing. Because they are professions, okay. They want, they know how to attract consumers. They know how to do advertising. If they can do that better than you, you may want to cooperate with a retailer. Uh, some other situations include a retailer may be able to attract more consumers by offering more choices. As a consumer, when you want to go to go for a shopping, you want to see many different products. You. Typically, you do not want to have only one choice, right? So, if there is a store, a company store, offering only one product, and there is another retail retail store offering multiple products from multiple brands, then if you have not decided which one to buy, you will prefer to go to the retail store. Okay, so because retailers have the function of offering more choices. That will be some good news for consumers, and consumers would be willing to go to retailers. Some other reasons:、uh, retailers may be able to do better demand forecasting. Oh, typically that's true because retailers knows more about the market, and finally retailers may be able to provide better services. Okay, these are all possible reasons for you to work with independent retailers. So these are all those things you need to consider when you want to decide whether you want to do direct or indirect channels.、Uh, by the way, the last two points of better forecast,、uh, forecasting, and better services will still be will also be discussed in、uh, two different papers we will going to see in this semester. Okay, so when a channel must be indirect. So, for example, in the last week, we studied mechanisms or contracts that can coordinate indirect channels. This is the subject of channel coordination. If we have no choice, if we must adapt a, an indirect channel, we will seek for channel coordination. But if we still have the chance to decide or to mix different channels, then we will face this so-called Channel structure selection problem. Now, this is another subject dealing with how may a brand owner or manufacturer decide the channel structure. Oh, one structure, direct or indirect,、uh, online store or physical retailers or、uh, mixing everything. Yeah, that's the channel structure selection problem, and under different scenarios. We want to find the best channel structures. Okay, the typical、uh, trade-off in a channel structure selection problem is about in a direct channel, you control everything. You can eliminate double marginalization. You eliminate loss inefficiency cost by the retailers, right? So that's something good. 
but in indirect channels, it's it's possible for you to work with some guy that can really sell a lot of products. Huh? If you can find a retailer that is really strong, then you will be willing to cooperate with him, right? So the trade-off is between efficiency and the effectiveness of selling products. That's how we have channel structure problems. Okay, so now、uh, let's get ourselves focused because channel structure problem is such a big field.、Uh, we cannot talk about that for only three hours and try to complete everything. So let's focus to the paper on McGuire and Stiley. So now、uh, let's see here. Suppose、uh, here I want to introduce to you the idea about interesting research questions. What are And when do we say a question is interesting? When do we say a result is interesting? Okay, and we will use channel structure as an example. Suppose I am studying a channel structure problem, and I write a paper、uh, to consider a very complicated channel. And eventually, what I showed is here: a direct channel is better than an indirect channel. As a manufacturer, I want to operate a direct channel. Think about this for ten seconds. Probably you will have the same feeling with me. Huh? The same feeling is that it is trivial, because we know complete integration is optimal. As a manufacturer, if the retailer is not better than me, what's the point for working with a retailer, right? What's the point for operating an indirect channel? Okay. So if you show the manufacturer wants a direct channel, and the reason is because we can eliminate double marginalization, we can get the whole pie. The result is trivial. So you may ask, oh, okay. So how about this? I may show that a franchise store outperforms a self-owned stores. I may show that indirect channel is better than a direct channel. Okay. Uh, you say direct outperforms indirect is trivial. How about I show indirect is better than direct? Again,、uh, whether your result is interesting depends on your underlying. If you show that indirect is better than direct, because the franchise store is just stronger, okay, then your answer, your result is still trivial, right? Oh,、uh, you find someone that is really good. In doing marketing, and then you say up、uh, working with him is better than doing your own business. Again, everyone will say the re the result is trivial. So that somehow means integrating a weak person may be worse than working with a strong one.、Uh, I guess that's yeah, just trivial. So you may want to ask, okay, everything is trivial. What is interesting? So let me ask you this question. Suppose I give you a situation that the manufacturer is as strong as the retailer in doing the selling business. Oh, the manufacturer.、Uh, when they are selling the same product, the manufacturer is as good as the retailer. Okay, so that's one situation. And also,、uh, under this situation, you show integration is not optimal. Okay. The retailer is not stronger than the manufacturer, but you want to work with the retailer. Oh, then this result is at least non-trivial, right? This result is interesting. There is some reason for you to work with a not strong one. Oh, the retailer is not stronger than you in selling a product, but you want to work with him. You do not want to control everything. You do not want integration. If you find some reason for this to happen, then that's interesting. That's non-trivial.、Uh, you need to find something non-trivial for you to say, "Hey, I I find something. I found something," and ask someone to read. Okay, your result must be non-trivial. So, McGuire and Stiling in 1983, they did that. 
they show that vertical integration may be suboptimal. And they show this,、uh, of course, they assume the manufacturer is as good as the retailer. Okay, and then show vertical integration is suboptimal under horizontal competition. Okay, they are trying to provide a subtle、uh, reason for we to see indirect channel. Their explanations is that okay, indirect channels may be caused by horizontal competition. Vertical integration may be suboptimal under horizontal competition. Okay, that's something new they want to tell us. And if after we get into their models, we will see that their model is simple or their idea is simple. It's just a combination of price competition. Oh, that means the Bergen game we saw, and the pricing in a supply chain. On the Stegobert game we saw, okay, it's a combination of these two games. One interesting observation here is that price competition is a horizontal competition, and the pricing in the supply chain we mentioned is a vertical competition, okay. When in either game, if we have only one game, then integration is optimal, okay. Integration is good under price competition. Integration is good under a Stegobert game, but when we mix these two games to get something that is closer to the、uh, real world, then we may generate new insights. Okay, that's why this paper is、uh, contributive. Okay,、uh, lastly, there is a typo here.、Um, it is. Okay, not a big deal. So in the next slides,、uh, I mean in the next lecture, we will start to talk about McGuire and styling. Thank you.